Back then, I was a very shy and introvert kid. Therefore, I spent many hours at home on my laptop after school. I had a very limited number of people I used to hang out with, and we didn't plan something together that often. So, I was looking for friends online via chat rooms or Facebook or whatever. On one of those chat rooms, I met a girl who was a year younger than me, and we instantly clicked. We used to send private messages to each other pretty regularly, and at one point after our first talk, we exchanged phone numbers. From there on, our conversations began to be more frequent. We connected really well, and we talked via text or called each other a lot. At the time, I never noticed anything odd. We got along so well that after a while we even discussed about having a relationship. Up until then, we had never met, because despite living in the same city, our houses were pretty far away. Since this is a big city. Anyways, after some time, we decided to meet in person, and so we arranged a time and a place to finally see each other for the first time. We planned to go out the upcoming Saturday to a cafe near her house. Long story short, Saturday comes and I took the bus to where we had planned to meet up. While I was riding the bus, she sent me a text saying that she changed her mind and now wanted to come to her house. Now bear in mind that I was a naive kid who wasn't smart street at all back then, and I was feeling desperate to have a girlfriend, since most of my peers had one. The point is, I wasn't a teenager who could think that anything bad was going to happen to me. So I accepted, and when I got off the bus, I started walking towards her house. I had a detailed map of my city at home, and I took a look at it before I left my home. So I kind of knew what road to take in order to reach her house. However, while I was walking, I couldn't but help notice that I was going through some narrow alleys, which were poorly lit. At the time, I didn't think much of it. But when I reached her street, I started feeling some weird vibes. I now know that was my intuition telling me to leave immediately. But as I said, I was a teenager who was excited about the idea of having a girlfriend. Anyways, while I was looking for the numbers on the building, trying to find hers, I noticed that two tall guys standing in front of a building, which turned out to be the building that girl told me she lived in. The two men were wearing jeans and had their hoodies up, so it was hard to see their faces. While I was closing in, they noticed me and started staring me down. When I got close enough to them, they called me over and told me this. Hey, are you here for... The name of the girl I was talking to. I instantly froze and looked at them, not knowing what to say. I muttered, Yeah, how do you know? Stupid, I know, but I wasn't the best in dealing with panicking and fear at that age. Then they replied something. They made me so frightened I almost couldn't breathe. Their reply was something like this. She's not here, but we can make it up to you. How about let us get you to her? We can take you to where she is. At that time, my fear turned into pure adrenaline and I started running as fast as I could to the direction I came from. They chased me, but fortunately I was fit and managed to outrun them. When I finally reached a busy street nearby, I stopped to catch my breath and saw that they weren't following me anymore. I then saw them in the distance making inappropriate gestures to me and shouting, but they couldn't come to me and step out of the alley they were on due to the many people in the street I was at. After a couple of minutes, they turned around and left. I was left there thinking about what just happened and how lucky I was. In the end, I took the bus home and meanwhile I received a text from that girl's phone number saying, You got lucky. I didn't know if I could block the number from my phone back then, so I deleted it immediately. Fortunately, I didn't hear anything else from her ever again. At 25 now... I, of course, know that whenever I have a date with a girl, I should always arrange it in a public place with many people nearby, and that's my advice to anyone.
I'm very thankful that I got away from a potentially bad situation, and I truly hope that nobody will get to experience anything horrible happening to them. So, to that girl and those two guys that chased me, let's never meet. So back in 2014, when I was 21, I was in an on-again, off-again, toxic relationship and was trying to get over him and move on, so I thought giving dating sites a crack. I tried a few, met a few guys, some decent that never went anywhere and some that were just plain looking for sex or had serious issues. I hadn't dated since high school as I'd been in two long-term relationships, fairly close together with people that I had known for a while. As I'm sure you can imagine, I was pretty clueless. I wasn't used to guys trying to trick me into sex, or leading me on, or even how dating really worked. For example, how many days after the date do I have to wait to text him? Anyway, after a few failed attempts to find someone, I thought I'd broaden my horizons and really try to find someone serious. At the time, I was talking to a couple of guys. The one that stood out was a really nice if not slightly simple guy, who I had a lot in common with, who was called Liam. I didn't want to put my eggs in one basket, so I started talking to another guy that wasn't really my type, physically or mentally, but he was smart and funny, so I thought I'd see how things played out, seeing as most of the guys that I picked, based on gut feelings, turned out to be terrible. This man, who I nicknamed Guy, can't remember why now, but it was a running joke between us, was very, very persistent and very cocky, which I wasn't really into, but he seemed like a cool guy on the other hand, was very knowledgeable, quick-witted, and easy to talk to. We spoke on the phone a few times, and it was a reasonably good experience, but there was something about him I just didn't really like. As I mentioned previously, he was quite cocky and used to do little annoying things, like hang up without saying goodbye, and had an arrogant, pushy demeanor. One day on the phone, I pulled him up on it and told him I believed that it was all front and that he wasn't that arrogant and he was a lot nicer than he let on. He told me that he had an ex-girlfriend who broke up with him because he was too much of a pushover, so he decided that women liked guys that were on the arrogant side. I told him I didn't at all and I spoke to him because I felt there was something more than that to his personality. I also called him out on little things in his profile, such as not liking fat chicks and other things. I am a bigger girl, so I asked him if that was a problem, to which he responded that it wasn't. He had just written that to make himself look better. I accepted his excuse, and hoped for the best. I decided I needed to try different kinds of men if I wanted to find someone, so I gave Guy a chance. He often suggested meeting at his place over pizza and movies, which I wasn't quite comfortable with, so I suggested he come out to a club with a few friends which he declined, and tried to convince me to come back to his place, to which I wasn't really keen on. After it clicked with him that I wasn't coming over to his house in the middle of the night, he suggested we go out for coffee. As I didn't drive, he suggested that he would pick me up, which I didn't really think was a good idea, but agreed in the end. We decided to go to a local coffee shop that I was quite fond of, which was open throughout the night. At around 8, he picked me up and we exchanged pleasantries, and once we were seated, I was genuinely surprised by his attentiveness and how much interest he displayed, asking me many questions about myself. Still, something didn't sit right. It wasn't that I didn't like him, it was just something that made me feel uncomfortable. All went well, we chatted about this and that, until the questions took a strange turn. Have you ever kissed someone just simply because you were horny? He asked, rather loudly, considering we were in a crowded cafe. I was taken back, and embarrassed, and hesitated before stuttering, Uh, no, not really. I think that's more of a male thing. I can't say I've done that, no. He then asked me a few more innocent questions before switching the topic back, asking if I liked oral sex and other oddly worded questions that I can't remember. Sexual questions that were unusual. I lightly told him that it was rude to ask me that, 
but still was tolerant of him. I've encountered many douches, and at that time, told I wouldn't get much better. Not long after this, he suggested we leave. By this, I thought he meant part ways, as he knew I had to meet up with a friend, not long after coffee. I was wrong. We went to the counter, and he offered to pay, to which I declined. Luckily, he did because ironically, I had left my wallet at home. I felt like it was such a cliche, but felt super guilty as it makes me feel bad when anyone pays for me. When we got in the car, he started to drive a different direction to where I lived, which was 5 minutes away. I asked where we were going, and he pulled up in a street nearby with little to no street lights that was extremely dim and parked outside a random house. I asked him what we were doing there, and he told me he wanted to talk in private, to which I responded that we could talk private out in the front of my house. He argued that it wouldn't be private and that people would look out of the windows. I stupidly told him that no one would because only my sister was home and I would text her not to. He kicked up a bit and got slightly angry before agreeing to take me home. This should have been enough for me, but no, I was naive and lonely. When we parked out in the front of my house, we started talking and he tried to lean in to kiss me to which I kept pulling away and giving off negative body language, but I was still friendly. After a bit, he started asking me to look at him, to which I made jokes. Sometimes in stressful situations, I make jokes to clear the tension. It's a bad habit. I tried keeping my distance until he basically turned my head and kissed me. I just went with it, as I was lonely and thought he wasn't too bad looking, and I reasoned that a kiss was just a kiss. After a few seconds, I tried to pull away and he pulled me into a bear hug, to which I half-heartedly tried to get out of, but gave up and continued kissing him. A little while later, I tried to pull away and he kept me in almost a headlock type hold. Still, somehow, I wasn't concerned enough to get out of there. We stopped kissing after a bit and continued talking. He asked if I'd sit in the back seat with him to cuddle, to which I hesitantly said yes. Once we got in the back, we cuddled and talked, but then he kept grabbing at my boobs and down below. I kept telling him to stop because it was pissing me off. He was doing it in a jokey way, like, Whoops, accidentally brushed your boob. I didn't take it too seriously until it happened a few times, and I told him that he had his feel and enough was enough. I wasn't good at saying no to men back then. Not that this is any excuse. After a couple of times, I said I was moving to the other side of the car, so he couldn't touch me. I sat there, and we continued talking when all of a sudden he reached out and pulled me in for a cuddle. He was playing with my hair when all of a sudden he pushed my head down, hair wrapped in his hands. I was confused and tried to push my head back up, but when he roughly pushed it down again, I realized what he was doing. I don't know how I did it. Guy was around 6 foot 2 and 120 kilograms, but I managed to get myself out of his grip and get out of the car. As I was getting out, he yelled out to come back, that he didn't do anything. You know what you fucking did. Thanks for the fucking coffee, I said as I slammed his door in his face. I walked quickly but steadily to my front door, even though I was petrified, as I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of seeing me running. He continued yelling out of his car that he had done nothing wrong the whole time I was walking. I banged down my front door and my younger sister opened it to see me in tears. I told her what happened and eventually settled down. I swiftly blocked him on Facebook and vowed never to talk to him again. I kid you not, three days later at while at work, I received a text message from him. Guy. Hey, you want to get coffee tonight? Me. No? Him. Why reply then? After an hour of no response, him. I see what you did there. Me. I'm just curious, why do you even bother asking? Him. Because I think you're cute. I'm curious why you're answering. I sent a picture that reads, You smell like hidden motives. Get away from me. Him. 
Pretty sure my motives tasted fine when my tongue was down your throat the other night. I never made contact again after that and blocked his number. A few years went by. I was telling someone about him and decided to unblock him on Facebook to show her when I noticed that I now had a mutual friend. The mutual friend was a girl I had been extremely close with in high school who confessed to me that she had been raped from a child onward. I was the only one she had ever told and I helped her find the courage to put that piece of shit away so naturally I freaked out and messaged her. I told her the whole story and she was stunned. She told me that he worked with her and now lectured something to do with justice at a local university, which was laughable. She told me that he had harassed her for months about going on a date with him and would occasionally get quite nasty. And all the time she knew him, she felt uncomfortable around him, even when he was nice. He chopped and changed quite regularly apparently, and she felt kinda intimidated most times. He would guilt, pressure, and have a go at her about this date or not messaging him back, etc. Very full on, almost stalkerish. She ended up getting a boyfriend and he was furious and she didn't hear from him after that. This happened three summers ago, but I remember the main events. To preface this, I have been on a shocking amount of dates and put myself in many foolish situations in the past. I am a female, and I was 25 at the time, if it matters. It started on the POF app. I came across a cute guy. He was my type physically, kind of nerdy looking. On his profile, he had very adventurous photos of him hiking and traveling. He seemed really exciting to get to know. Once he saw I looked at his profile, he sent me a message. We flirted a bit, back and forth, and exchanged numbers, even though he lived about an hour away. He said on the app he's never been to my city, and didn't plan on it, so we probably wouldn't meet. I respected his honesty. I don't like wasting my time. One day, shortly after meeting him, online he texted me, randomly, saying he's in my town and on some work thing, and invited me to a bar he was at. I decided to meet up since I was already in the area. He said he would pick me up. I was dumb and agreed to this, even though it was just over four blocks away. It took him way longer than it should have to get to me, and I honestly don't think he was actually ever at the bar. Once in POF Dates car, I noticed it was a rental and that it seemed like he had just gotten his license, because he was a terrible driver. After driving in circles, he told me to pick a place but not in the area because parking is impossible. I picked a place 15 minutes away by car with lots of parking, but also a busy place since I was with a stranger. Once there, he started pressuring me to drink. He insisted. I'm not a huge drinker, but I enjoy pub-style bars. I caved and had a drink and was again pressured to have another one. He was very pushy and seemed really irritated that I wasn't going for it. Usually I'd end a date pretty quickly if being mistreated but he became charming enough to keep me there, at least until we were done with our date. I saw an old acquaintance at the bar and wanted my date to know I knew him. In my head, I think I wanted my date to know that someone could identify him. I'm not paranoid, but I think my subconscious was on alert. After an hour of talking in the bar, I tell him I'm ready to head out. He insisted we go across the road to get coffee. At the time it seemed strange to me. Neither of us had much to drink and didn't need to sober up. Coffee seems like an odd choice otherwise. I entertained it. Once there, we sipped our drinks. He told me he rented a beautiful Airbnb in a nearby neighborhood that is more out of the city or the country. He told me he had it all to himself and invited me to go out and how nice it is. I kept politely saying no and throwing around different excuses, which he would counter with a reason for me to come. 
with no intention of going. I agreed, but only if he would drive me home to get overnight things. I felt he wasn't going to let me say no. He seemed happy with that answer, so we headed out. While driving in the direction of my place, he said instead he would stop at a 7-Eleven and grab me travel-sized toiletries so I wouldn't need anything. I felt panicked because my plan was not to go with him. Something about him was off and I felt stupid for even getting back in his car to begin with. He turned his car and we were then headed toward the more country area. Literally, there aren't any 7-Elevens or open stores in the middle of nowhere. Then I mentioned that I'm actually thinking I'd prefer not to stay with him and asked to be brought back home. He then said something that made me completely nervous to be around him for much longer. He said he's sharing the Airbnb with the owners and said they are really fun and sweet and that they drink and play games together. He originally said he had it all to himself. I knew I didn't want to make it obvious that I was catching on to his lie. So I went along with it and said, Oh, I have to wear my cute fluffy overnight PJs instead of my date dress because I'll be way more comfy. Then I spewed off a few other things. I mentioned that I need my medication and absolutely can't miss a dose. Surprisingly, he turned around and as we drove back into the city, I felt a bit more calm, but at that point, not safe. Finally, we get close to my place. I had no intention of letting him close enough to know where I live. He was mentioning that he was going to come up to my apartment once we got there and that is just a huge hell no. I don't know what I would do, but I looked for any opportunity to get out of the situation, knowing he could turn around and take me somewhere private in the matter of 15 minutes, if he wanted. We got to a stop sign where people were crossing. Thank God. I quickly but calmly got out and said, Hey, you know, I think I have a headache. I'll text you. I closed the door and went through a public park which was beside a building that his car wouldn't be able to drive into. I looked back to make sure he wasn't getting out of his car and following me, and I could see him staring at me. He was so furious, I have chills thinking about it. Within the hour, he had blocked me on POF. Looking back, I think he possibly wanted to get me a coffee to possibly put something in it. I think he told me on POF that we wouldn't ever meet to maybe cover his ass. And I know he did not have good intentions with me. Since then, I have met my fiancé on POF and was super careful about dating, up until then making sure the first few dates are very public and to arrange my own transportation. POF creep, let's not meet again. When I was in high school, I knew my parents' divorce was imminent. My mom was cheating on my dad and my dad was cheating on my mom. I did everything I could to prevent my parents divorcing, but I knew it was a lost cause. My mother had been planning to leave him for a long time and eventually served him on my 17th birthday. They agreed to leave under the same roof until I was out of high school, so I wouldn't have the stress of having two homes. When I was a little over 18, my mum had been consistently conversing with new men on multiple dating apps. She even got an app that I was known to use called Kick Messenger. She fell asleep with the app open one night, and I'd seen she was messaging a man named blank. I'm not using his name due to privacy concerns, obviously. I ignored it, but I'd known the name and seen the face multiple times on her cell phone. Fast forward maybe two months. Dad and I were just spending time together and wanted to go out somewhere to eat. His friend called him up that night. My dad had been known to be a social drinker who frequented local bars. He had many good friends that were bartenders and several social drinkers. His friend was at the local bar, 
and met a man named AJ who was looking for my father by name in order to buy a vehicle. My dad is a car sales manager. We stopped by the bar that night because we just thought we would eat there. The bar isn't really shabby or the typical bar most would think of. We live in a small country town and the bar was on the lake and people would rent lots to put their campers on. It was a bit like a club slash lodge. This man was introduced as AJ. However, I recognised him immediately as the man who my mother had been conversing online with. I didn't say anything to my dad at first. I for sure thought he was just similar and I was overreacting. That is, until he called me by my full name, without anyone introducing him to me or even saying my name. He knew my first, middle, and last name. He also came up to greet me at the table I was sitting at. He tried getting me to open lotto tickets for him and was rubbing up against me and trying to touch my inner thighs. I was kind of frozen and didn't know what to do. He eventually left me alone after he saw people staring at him. I did what I knew to do. I googled his full name and found his Facebook and other information. That's when I found out he was a registered sex offender slash ex-con in the bordering state over. I looked repeatedly from AJ to the man on my phone screen and there was no doubt he was the same dude. He only lived about 30 minutes away from my own home. I pulled Dad to the side and told him that this man was not who he said he was. I showed Dad the picture and the information I'd found. I ran to the bathroom crying because I knew something bad was happening. He'd lied about his name, knew both me and my father's names, and he knew where my father worked. After hearing this info, my dad refused to go outside with AJ. He made multiple attempts at getting my dad outside alone to take a look at dad's truck due to the fact he wanted something similar. He eventually stopped pushing my dad and went outside for a smoke. The manager of the bar immediately locked the doors and locked him outside, refusing to let him back in. Everyone in the bar, most of them were close friends of my dad, had seen how suspicious he had been acting, and many had seen him rubbing up against me. The manager called the cops to report him. It didn't take him long to figure out that he'd been caught and he attempted to leave the bar and drive away. My dad followed him up the road, trying to make sure he didn't get away. However, he was plastered and ended up crashing in the snowbank just up the road from the bar. He was caught by police and charged with a DUI. He was jailed just five minutes up the road from my home. I did not sleep a good night's sleep for about a month. If he knew my family as well as he seemed to, he probably knew where I lived. He was bailed out only two days after the incident. His vehicle had been found with duct tape, drugs, rope, a crowbar, and other materials in it when they impounded his car. He was also charged for violating his probation. He is a tier 3 sex offender. He raped a minor with a deadly weapon and was required to register for life. He was not supposed to leave the state at the time of the incident. Not supposed to have a Facebook or almost any form of social media where he could reach a minor and was not allowed to even operate his vehicle due to his license being taken away. I also ended up pressing charges for sexual harassment, as well as getting a restraining order against him. I also found out through phone records and the police tracking his phone that he'd driven past my home 
more than 20 times in a week leading up to the incident. He'd also been to my dad's job and my school multiple times throughout a period of six months. He'd been following both of us for a long time. I have never experienced something so crazy or scary in my life. I live in a completely different state, thousands of miles away now, thank God, but my family is still in the state where the incident happened. He has still yet to be charged or arrested with the harassment slash stalking charges and probably never will be seeing as he knows if he comes back to the state he can be arrested if he's so much as pulled over because he has a warrant out for his arrest. Since then, I do not ever put my full name on any social media. I only put my first name, except for things like Facebook. I have become a very paranoid person when it comes to my full name and my address and other info. Please, everyone, be careful who you talk to on dating sites. You never know who's behind the screen or what their true intentions are. And if you do find someone you like, investigate and do your homework. I lived in a town with a population of 5,000 people, and I never once thought this kind of thing could happen to me. But it can. And it will happen. He was my first kiss and also first abusive relationship. We first started dating when I was a preteen. He was super attentive and protective of me from the very beginning. It wasn't until the fifth month when I started noticing the alarms going off loudly in my head. He had taken me on a cute roller skating date and we had sat down for a bit to take a break when two of his friends showed up. At this point, the vibe from him was no longer safe. The smile he had five minutes beforehand was replaced with a look of pure hatred. He switched into this odd predator mode and told me to kiss him, with tongue, in front of his friends. I told him that I was just not ready to do something like that, and especially not in front of other people. He didn't like that answer and pulled my face to his, and started forcing his tongue in my mouth. I was a pretty small girl back then, but luckily I was able to push him away long enough to start running towards a more populated part of the skate rink. I told him to stay away from me while I waited for my mom to pick me up. I didn't tell my mom what happened because I was in shock and confused. I was young and I didn't want to get in trouble for kissing a boy, so I decided to just ignore him until I was able to process everything. A week of successfully avoiding him at school passes, when he has worked up the nerve to try to say something again. He found me surrounded by a group of friends and decided to try his luck. I didn't even notice he was there until we were practically bumping elbows. Being that close to him definitely put me on edge, and I nearly shit myself when he started speaking to me. It was all pointless small talk, until he realized I wasn't in the forgiving mood. Then his mood shifted, like before, and he was just staring at me like I was the most disgusting human on the planet. I was holding one of those old portable CD players when he yanked it out of my hands and started trying to shove it in his bag in a shit attempt to steal it. I yelled at him to give it back and tried prying it from him, which he apparently took offense to because he punched me in the face with enough force to drop me to the ground. I obviously started crying and we were both sent to the principal's office. His dad was the football coach in that Midwestern community, so he was able to talk the principal into only requiring his son to attend detention just once for his punishment. We didn't see each other too much after that, and thankfully ended up going to different high schools. Then I ran into him at a Taco Bell drive through my sophomore year. I didn't realize he was the cashier until I was at the window, about to pay when we made awkward eye contact. I pretended to not recognize him and hurried with the transaction, until I was able to speed away. Unfortunately, he saw our chance at meeting as a sign of fate, 
and attempted to send the equivalent of a you up text to my Facebook profile. Unfortunately, I can never unsee his ultra cringy attempt at flirtation. I think I saw you at Taco Bell today. I was the cashier, lol. You're pretty cute still, and I was wondering if you wanted to send some booty pics. My response was an immediate block, and I made sure to let my sisters know about the incident, because I just had to tell someone. If I had known then just how dangerous this teenage boy would become, I wouldn't have taken any of the incidents so lightly, but I'm not a psychic. After some awkward laughs, I moved on with my life and continued to date less shitty people. Fast forward to today, when my sister sends me an article from her local news report featuring my dear first boyfriend's picture. Apparently, he decided to stab someone in the throat at a popular venue when they tried defending a woman he was physically attacking. We dated nearly 10 years ago, but I still can't shake the feeling that I definitely dodged a bullet. It's a strange feeling when you realize that dangerous people are weaving in and out of your life without you even knowing before it's too late sometimes. According to the comments in this article, he had a habit of assaulting the women in his life and had a history with obsessive stalking. I imagine justice will be served swiftly due to the manner of the crimes and the overwhelming evidence supporting a case against the psychopath. I hope we never meet again. I have tried looking online for more information, but I haven't found an article with verified names yet since the crime is still under investigation. The attack happened in St. Joseph, Missouri, two days ago. Friends and family from the victims have been the main source of valid information so far. I unfortunately only have screenshots of what my sister has sent me from the comments and posts that have been made by those impacted. I live in California now, so without my sister sending me the screenshots, I wouldn't have even known it had happened, since I have no contact with anyone else in Missouri. This is a real event and it has impacted real lives. Thanks for all of the positive comments and messages. Please be aware of who you surround yourself with, because he isn't the only encounter I've had with a sociopath. Just my first. A link to an article has been added to the comments. The article states it's a possible stabbing, but according to posts released by the victims and their family involved, the scene was quite a bit more gruesome and violent than what has been reported by news. I can only verify my own experience with this man, and I'm very thankful that the victims are expected to make a full recovery. This just happened tonight, so this shit is fresh, and I'm freaked out and honestly pissed off. I, 23 female, met Jason, 29 male, from an app online last September. We clicked immediately and from then on went out together about once a week, sometimes twice. We spent the past year going on dates, out to nice restaurants, garden walks, spending the night, etc. We established that we had feelings for each other about two months into everything, though we had our rocky moments and I didn't fully trust him. At one point I wanted to date but he claimed he was too busy with work, which subsequently caused us to separate for a while. Once we eventually came back together, I told him I didn't want to be exclusive, but we could still hang out as I enjoyed his company. Now, there were always some sneaking suspicions that there was another partner in his life, because he always paid in cash wherever we went and was very secretive about his private life. I had voiced these thoughts to him but honestly didn't care too much because after he told me he wasn't interested in dating me, I also started seeing another partner and was using protection with both of them. Meanwhile, he didn't want to date me, but raged whenever he thought there was another man around my life. He has exhibited some concerning and possessive behaviors, but I let them slide for the most part because I was still doing whatever I wanted. Fast forward to tonight, November 19th, 2019, 14 months after we met. We went to a really nice restaurant downtown after work, and I asked if he wanted to take the subway back to my place since we had a few drinks. We stopped by his car to grab his bag and off we went to the station. 
When we got to the station, he said he forgot his card in his car, and I figured it was no biggie and swiped for him. I said he didn't need to pay me back because it was like $2, but he insisted that he would Venmo me. When we got to my apartment, I told him he was welcome to take a shower, and he went to the bathroom. I was messing around on my phone and saw CS had sent me $2 for the train. This was weird to me because his initials are JN, so I clicked on his Venmo friends list. He only had around 20 Venmo friends, so I picked a random person and looked them up on Facebook. I went down their friends list, and would you look at that? A picture of Jason and his brother. Only issue is, the name was Chase Smith. The photo did look a little different, because he was about 50 to 60 pounds heavier in the photograph, and is currently very fit, but I was 90% sure it was him. Just to confirm, I googled his name in the area around which he lives, and I got a hit on white pages. It said he was related to Velma and Shaggy Smith, and I remembered him telling me that his siblings were named Velma and Shaggy. So it turned out I didn't even know the name of the guy I'd been boinking for a year. He got out of the shower and sat down on my bed. I was quiet and looked at his face, asking, Is your real name Chase Smith? This motherfucker looked me dead in the eye and said, No. You guys, I lost it. Like I made the Leave Britney Alone guy look cool, calm, and collected. Started crying and telling him to get the fuck out of my house. He approached me and I told him not to touch me, but he grabbed my wrist and insisted that we talk about it. I told him again to get the fuck out of my house and never contact me again. He refused to leave for a while, but eventually did. Afterward, I looked a little deeper and found out that he has criminal records, though I can't see what they're for. From his past behavior, I'm honestly a little worried for my safety, because I immediately blocked him on everything, and I know for a fact he's going to go ape shit when he realizes he can't contact me. Everything has been a lie. When you think you know someone, it turns out they're probably crazy. Admittedly, it's a little bit funny because what the fuck, but also I'm getting some you vibes and I'm not ready to die yet, you know? So I'd be cool if Chase Smith never came around again. Update. So my sister has continued to sleuth. Turns out today he slightly changed the spelling of his last name on Facebook, probably to deter others he's been messing with from finding his profile. He doesn't know how I found him and doesn't realize that the spelling of his last name wasn't relevant in the process. The dude is an actual psycho who's probably doing this to multiple women. I'm honestly more afraid for them than myself because they clearly don't know what's going on if he's taking further steps to hide himself. I wish I knew who they were so I could reach out and warn them. <laughs>